So going back real quick to chapter four, at the end of chapter four is when we talked about dealing with files. And as you know, for this program, you have to deal with files. What if I do that? Is that a little better? I think that's better. Yeah. Yeah. So when we got ready to work with files, um, we came in and one of the things that we needed to do for sure that you don't need to know now, uh, later in the book chat and CPS 230, you're going to learn about what this throws IO exception is. But for now, you need to make sure you include that when you're dealing with your file work. Um, for this, the author, uh, yeah, we need this. Well, we come in and we want to get ready to work with our file. The author does all of this where he asks for a file name. We don't really need to do that. We are okay with hard coding the name of the file in right here. So instead of file name for our program, you know, we have scores.txt. So save yourself a little work and go right with scores.txt. Okay, when we come in, remember we want to open the file. That was the first thing. Open file. Okay. Then you know, we get it all ready. We say input file is the name we're going to use throughout the program. Then I want to read some things in. And I need to read them in. Some folks are going to come into here and they're just going to put a counter. They're going to get stuck in an infinite loop because they're never reading something in. And I think instead of next line, we're reading in next. Int. Int, right, because we have a whole bunch of and then finally, you're going to close the file. Once I have a counter coming out of there, then I'm going to initialize my array. Then I'm going to go back and redo this process again. So working on that last program, make sure you're coming back. And it's uh, code listing 419. Go back and just to reference some of what's going on there. I had a question about the throws I, IO exception when it comes yeah. to methods. Yep. Um, I think I, I just kind of kept trying over and over. I had to include it in my main method and then both of my methods that used the file class. Um, yes. Okay. Yep. Is that, again, something that will get it answered in 2.30? Um, why you have to do all that? Yeah, but you okay. just need to know now when you're going to do file work, you have to have that throws IO exception. And remember, the main is actually set up the same as methods. It has a heading, it has the braces and the whole nine yards. So they are kind of almost the same thing. Uh, does the main have a return type? Yeah. Uh, ye it public, returns void. Yeah, public right. static void main. I mean, it's it's just yeah. like a, a method heading. Okay, so methods. You know, if you did 7.1 already and a couple have, and you don't use methods, that's fine. But I mean, you just, you're ahead of us. But if you are still working on 7.1 and you want to do methods now, you can, but you need to do them for assignment 7.2. So let's talk about um, passing something into a method and returning something from a method. So before we would do something along the lines of public, static, um, void, let's just call this XX, I don't really have a name for it. And we would pass something in, an int, and then some variable we created, a local variable. And we learned that we could do this parameter list with integers, doubles, any kind of new data type I learn, I can include inside of my parameter list. We just learned about the data type array. I can include an array in here. What we're gonna look at today is how do I pass an array in, which is great, and at the same time, what if I wanted to public static, I wanted to have a return type that was an array in, in a method, blah, 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 blah. So just like anything else, just like an int, a double, a string, 
I can now pass an array in. Okay, so instead of this, I'd like to pass an array in. And my other option is, can I return an array? So that's a little bit of an overview. Let's take a look at what we have. So in section 7.3, we get to talking about, uh, I declare an array. You wanted to say I declare war, don't you? Int, uh, it's an integer array. It's called numbers. And we know that numbers is the starting address of where it's at. Equals new, int, and then we give it a size. Now, if you look here, I want to call the method and pass in numbers. Now, what's being passed in? What's being passed in is a memory address. So this is a void method. I'm passing the array in, but all I'm passing in is the address of the array. So now when I get down to the actual parameter list, I know my argument was an address. My parameter list, I'm saying yes. I have an address, it's now called ARR, but it's gonna be an array of integers. So I know how to move across it four bytes at a time when we start looking for data. So my argument is up here, is numbers. My argument is an address, passes the address. When it flies down, it's gonna land in the parameter list. And when it lands down here, I'm saying, hey, that address is the start of an integer array. Little comment. Any changes to the array will in fact be permanent. Because remember what I'm passing is just the address. I'm not changing the address at any point. I'm only changing what follows that address. So this is- Okay, so unlike the other data types, this actually does change when you pass it first. That is correct. That is correct. And you'll learn how to do more um, changing in 161, and it stays with this idea of the address is being passed, not what's actually of the value. So when the address is passed, changes can be made. Okay. So, so that means you don't necessarily have to return it then, right? That's right. That's right. So really, we could stop with this. We don't need to do it as a return type as well, but we're looking at it. Good morning, Mustafa. We're looking at it um, as just an option, something you want to practice. But yeah, you can get away with everything in the parameter list. So when I call a method called get values, I'm going to be able to come in here and read all the values in and store them in the array. And then when it goes back, numbers is golden. It's good to go. And I, something I, I was wondering. Yep. Why are the times when you have to use Uh-oh. I froze. Did he freeze? No. That... No. Ask the I question again. Anthony, you what? froze. It's supposed what to be like 85 think? today. How can you be? What was your question again? <laughs> Okay, at what times should you and should you not use public or static in a method name? When did, when did we use public static void for methods in the program? When we wrote methods in a class, what wasn't there? Static. static. Static, right. So if it's over in a class, if it's a method in a class, we no longer use the word static. But when it's in a regular program, we do use it. So if you wanted to write 7.2, um, everything as a class and a demo, you're more than welcome to do that. Some students will just for the practice of trying to tie it all together. But yeah, that's the difference. That's a great question, Anthony. Well, can I ask a question quick, Professor, too? Yeah. I'm, I remember in one of the code listings, one of the methods had private. Okay. Um, so why does like why did a method have a private instead of a public? Okay, so that method would have been in a class, and there are times you want to write a method in a class that you don't want the demo program to have access to. And there's going to be um, uh, in 162, for example, we have where we call a method, and the method comes over to the class, but that method calls another method. And it's a private method because it's a recursive method, which 
A lot of these are words you don't understand. Um, but the recursive method, we didn't want the demo to be able to use because it would have really screwed everything up. But we had a public one that would call the private one to, to make it work, make the public method work better. So sometimes we just want to hide them. Just like we make length and width private, we're trying to hide it so the user doesn't get at it and do goofy stuff and mess things up. There's actually a third choice, a, a third specifier, and that's called protected. And we're not going to, you won't learn about protected until CPS um, 2.30. Good morning, Gabe. Glad you could make it. Uh, so the only ones on here are David uh, Ubaki and Samantha. Okay, so the second part, again, isn't necessary for section 7.5, but there are advantages somewhere down the road to be able to use it. Again, I have an array, okay? And you notice only the first part is done, that's okay, because we don't know the size, we don't necessarily give it a size. I say values equals get array. I come down here, public static. Now my return type, instead of void or int or something, is gonna be an array. An array of doubles is what's gonna be returned. I come in, I declare an array locally. I fill the values and you notice what I'm returning. What is it that I'm returning here? The address. The address. So that address is going to go over and it's going to land in values, which is then the second part of that initializing. Okay. Easy peasy, kind of working with methods, passing arrays as arguments. Again, I'm just. Bottom. What's that? Can I see at the bottom again? Yeah, buddy. There you go. So I call a method get array, and I know it's going to be returning an address, and the address better be the start of an array of doubles. So when I return it, it's an array of doubles. Okay, so this is an option to return the, an array. Right, right. And as uh, I don't know if it was Dorian or David, somebody mentioned a moment ago, we don't need to do all of this because we can do the same thing when we return the address up here in the parameter list. So when it goes back, still the same address, but the values in memory were changed. What you think about that? Yes, good? Yeah. Okay, so the last program you wrote, you filled an array, and I said, make all these um, loops separate. Don't make it one big loop when you're practicing and so on. And, and this is why, because it was going to lead into what I have now. Go back to that one you just did, where you filled the array. You got the largest, the smallest, and the average. Okay, what I want you to do is reorganize that program so that my main your main is this. I'm returning an array. So we're going to practice it. That was that last section we just covered. It's going to go in. It's going to fill an array with 10 numbers, whatever you want to do. Then I'm going to call a method get largest, where I'm passing the array in. And it's going to return the value that's the largest. Little simple blocks of code. We're just practicing the structure. I'm going to call get smallest. I'm going to call get average, and then I'm going to have a void method called display, and I'm going to send in that value for large, value for small, that value for average, which we know is a double, and then the array address. So you're going to write a main with five lines calling five methods. And again, like I said, if you did what we were talking about on Monday, you're just going to cut and paste and move blocks of code around after you do the layout. What do you think about that, folks?
Okay. So today we talked about the final a little bit. Beginning of class, we talked about file work again, covered passing arrays, we've covered returning arrays.